السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته To carry on with the medical embryology lectures I'm gonna discuss in this presentation the embryonic period which extends from week 4 to week 8 of pregnancy I'm Dr. Daria Saleh, Professor of Anatomy from Mansoura University, Egypt The two main events that take place in the embryonic period are First, organogenesis. In other words, we will learn the derivatives of the three germ layers, the ectoderm, the mesoderm, and the endoderm. And the second big event that takes place in this period also is morphogenesis or simply folding of the embryo. In this process, the flat trilaminar embryonic germ disk transforms into a cylinder. Let's start with ectoderm differentiation. During the third week of pregnancy, as you remember, the embryonic disc was oval in shape and then becomes pear-shaped. The wide area demarcates the cranial part of the embryo, while the narrow area here demarcates the caudal end of the embryo. If you are looking to the embryonic disc from above, you're going to see the following areas. The appearance of the buccopharyngeal membrane. It's a temporary membrane that will later on rupture and forms the mouth. At the caudal end, we have the cloacal membrane. Also, it is a temporary membrane that will rupture later on, forming the lower end of the anus. In the midline of the caudal half of the embryo, we have the primitive streak. And cranial to it, we have the primitive node. These are two active areas where their cells will proliferate and form the intraembryonic mesoderm. Also, from the primitive node, a mass of cells, a solid mass of cells, will proliferate in the direction of the uh, buccopharyngeal membrane. It will stop and form the notochord. And the notochord has many functions. The most important one that concerns us here is that it induces the formation of the neural tube from the ectoderm lying above it. So, the ectoderm above the notochord will differentiate into first the neuroectoderm, where we can see two areas in it the neural plate, which is the central area of the neuroectoderm just above the notochord. Its periphery or its edges are called the neural crest region or neural crest cells. The remaining part of the ectoderm is called the surface ectoderm. How the neural tube is formed? The cells in the neuroectoderm will thicken to form what is called the neural plate. And because the cells are dividing in a higher rate than the rest of the cells, it will transform into a groove with prominent neural folds. With further development, the neural folds approach each other and the groove deepens more and more. After a while, the neural folds will meet each other in the midline and the neural tube is formed and fuses. The tube then separates from the overlying surface ectoderm. This is a side view of the embryo. You can see that the neural tube will give rise to the following. The brain from its cranial part. The spinal cord from its caudal part. This is the brain, this is the cerebellum, this is the brain stem, and the spinal cord will be attached to it caudally. So you can see from the undersurface of the brain, another extension of the optic nerve and the retina of the eye will develop. And also the posterior lobe of the pituitary gland. What about the neural crest cells or the edges of the neural blade? As we said that uh, the neural crest cells originate from the cells of the neural folds. When the neural tube closes, the cells lie between the neural tube and the surface ectoderm. At first, they are close to the neural tube and then migrate to new locations away from the neural tube and give many derivatives. We're gonna remember the derivatives of the neural crystals by the, this mnemonic, the word GAMES. 
G reminds you of the ganglion cells of the dorsal root ganglia, of the cranial sensory ganglia, of the autonomic ganglia. A reminds you by the arachnoid and pyometer, and these are the two inner coverings of the spinal cord and the brain. M reminds you of the melanocytes or the pigment cells of the skin, the medulla of the suprarenal gland, the mesenchyme of the pharyngeal arches, and the mesenchyme of the pharyngeal arches will give some bones of the skull and also bones of the teeth which is called the dentin or dentine, and we call these cells the odontoblasts. E reminds you by the enteric ganglia, cells of the enteric ganglia, and these are autonomic ganglia that lies within the wall of the intestine. And S reminds you by the Schwann cells. These cells are responsible for formation of the myelin sheath in the peripheral nervous system. The remaining ectoderm is called the surface ectoderm and it gives the structures in contact with the outer world. We will remember it also by this mnemonic shape or shaping. Remember that the surface ectoderm gives the outer shape of the body, so we will remember it by the mnemonic shaping. S reminds you by the skin, the superficial part of the skin we call it the epidermis, and the glands in the skin like the sweat gland, the sepaceous or oil glands, and the mammary gland. H reminds you by the hair, which are also present in the skin. A by the lower part of the anal canal and the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland. P by the parotid gland, the largest salivary gland which lies just in front of the ear. E by the enamel of the teeth and the structures of the eye like the cornea, the lens, the inner and the external parts of the ear. N by the nail. Then we will talk about the derivatives of the endoderm or the inner layer of the uh, three germ layers of the embryo. Mostly it will give the epithelial lining of the gastrointestinal tract and the epithelium of the glands associated with the gastrointestinal tract like the liver, like the gallbladder, like the pancreas. Also, it will give rise to the epithelial lining of the respiratory tract. In the pharynx region or in the floor of the pharynx, it gives the epithelium of the thyroid and the parathyroid gland at first they develop from the floor of the pharynx and then migrate downward in the lower part of the neck in front of the uh, trachea also the endoderm gives the epithelial lining of the urinary bladder the urethra and the epithelium of the prostate and the pulpourethral glands Also, from the wall of the allantois, we have the primordial germ cells. They migrate from this side and go to the developing gonad to seed inside it and give the spermatogonia or the oogonia, according to the sex of the embryo. Next, we have the mesodermal uh, differentiation. And if you remember, the intraembryonic mesoderm develop in the third week of pregnancy by the process we call it gastrulation. It lies between the ectoderm and the endoderm. It gives the following structures, the notochord in the midline, the paraxial mesoderm on each side of it. Lateral to this uh, is the intermediate mesoderm. And at the periphery, we have the lateral pleat mesoderm, which later on splits into somatopleuric layer and splanchnopleuric layers. The paraxial mesoderm lies on each side of the notochord. Its cells proliferate and become segmented and divide into 42 to 44 somites or segments, as we can see here. In the middle, you can see the neural tube, and on each side are the somites. What happens to these somites? 
A cavity appears within these somites, dividing it into two distinct regions. A ventromedial part, we call it the sclerotome, it will migrate around the neural tube and the notochord, forming the vertebral column. A dorsolateral part, it's called dermomyotome, it's a superficial part, it's called the dermatome, and it gives the dermis of the skin, or the inner uh, layer of the skin, or the deep layer of the skin and deep to it the myotome and it will give the muscles of the axial skeleton. The intermediate mesoderm which lies lateral to the paraaxial mesoderm is also known as the nephrogenic cord and it gives the urogenital system. So its derivatives include the cortex of the suprarenal gland, the two kidneys, the gonads, testes or ovaries, the male and female duct system. In the female, this means uh, the uterine tubes, the uterus, the upper part of the vagina. In the male, this means the epididymis, the vas deferens, and so on. While the lateral plate mesoderm, which lies at the periphery, also cavities appear within the sheet of the lateral plate mesoderm. This cavities coalesce or fuse together and form one large intraembryonic coelom. The intraembryonic coelom, if we just think of the name, intra means inside, the embryo, and coelom means cavity, and this means that the cavities which lies within the embryo, and this gives the following cavities, the pleural cavities, which the lung will be contained within, the pericardial cavity, the heart will lie within it, and the peritoneal cavity where the remaining of the organs will lie within it. The intraembryonic coelom also divides the lateral plate mesoderm into two sheets of cells, the somatic layer or the parietal layer, and this gives the body wall and the limbs, and a splank neck or visceral layer, and this gives the wall of the viscera. Now let's move to the second event that takes place in the embryonic period, we call it the morphogenesis, or folding of the embryo. Simply, the trilaminar flat embryonic disc transforms into a cylinder. Why folding happens? Because of the rapidly growing dorsal part of the embryo in comparison to its ventral part. This is because the development of the neural tube and the somites. So the dorsal region of the embryo grows faster than the ventral region of the embryo. This forces the embryo to fold or bend upon itself. Folding occurs in two planes. In the median plane, meaning from cranial to caudal, we call it the cephalocaudal folding. And in a horizontal plane, we call it the lateral folding. So before the formation of the head fold or before the cephalic folding of the embryo, this was the arrangement of the structures. We have the neural tube and in this region it will give of course the brain. In front of it the buccopharyngeal membrane where we have the future mouth. And in front of the buccopharyngeal membrane this area is called the cardiogenic area and the heart will develop in this region. Of course, this is not the normal or the anatomical arrangement of our body. So after cephalic folding or cranial folding, the structure will take its normal anatomical position. So after formation of the head fold, part of the yolk sac or the endoderm will be trapped inside the head fold forming the foregut. The brain becomes the most cranial or most cephalic part of the embryo. The buccopharyngeal membrane and the heart will become ventral. Now let's look at the caudal end of the embryo. If you remember this, we have the extraembryonic mesoderm. And when cavities appear within the extraembryonic mesoderm, it will form the extraembryonic cavity or extraembryonic coelom. And if you remember, the embryo is still connected to the rest of the chorion by the connecting stalk and a small diverticulum or extension from the yolk sac caudally extends into the connecting stalk we call it the allantois. Cranial to the allantois lies the cloacal membrane. This is 
the structure of the embryo before formation of the tail fold. But what happens is that the embryo begins to bend caudally like this. And as a result of formation of the tail fold, the following will happen. Part of the yolk sac or the endoderm will be trapped inside the tail fold forming the hind gut. The cloacal membrane together with the allantois and the connecting stalk will become ventral. If we take a section in it and look at it, this is in cross section. You can notice that the amniotic cavity expands and the yolk sac shrinks. The trilaminar embryo now is forced to bend from side to side and transform into a cylinder. You can notice that the three germ layers bend and the embryo is transforming into a cylinder. Like this. So what are the results of formation of the lateral folds of the embryo? Now the flat embryo transforms into a complete cylinder and the body wall closes up and the anterior abdominal wall is formed. And part of the yolk sac is trapped inside the middle part of the embryo forming the mid part. This is the end of my presentation. Thanks for listening. If you like it, please do not forget to subscribe, like and share and hit the notification bell so you do not miss any of my future videos. Thank you.